Hello YouTube students, in this video I will go over everything that you need to know to become an academic weapon, to succeed in every way possible academically in 2025. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Miss Martins. I teach maths and science on here, but I also give you study tips, things that can help you really, really achieve those marks that you want to achieve. So hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. This video is going to focus more on the South African school curriculum and what you need to know in terms of what to study, what topics are coming up, how are you going to be tested, what is the waiting for exams versus school-based assessments. That's what we're going to be looking at now. So these are some common questions. I see a lot of my comments, my own students ask them, I see it on other platforms and I want to address these now. So what ATPs do we use? What's the teaching plan, the teaching program? What are the order of the topics? What is the scope? That's a big one that my students ask me. And I think I first want to address what is an ATP? ATPs, that stands for Annual Teaching Plan. Basically, it's a plan that shows you what topics are going to be taught in your subjects and the order in which the topics are recommended to be taught. So what do I mean by recommended? the government, the Department of Education, they draw up our ATPs for our teachers and our learners. And basically, it is a recommendation. So basically, they are saying, we suggest that in term one, you start off with algebra and you do simplifying expressions. Or if we're talking about physical sciences, in grade 11, you start off with vectors and forces. And then in term two, you focus on this topic and this topic. So it is a suggested plan that teachers follow. Lots of teachers, most teachers in the country do follow the ATPs. But some schools do not follow the order of the ATPs and they can switch topics around. So you need to double check the order with your teacher. And I just want to be clear what I mean here. When I say some schools don't follow the ATPs, I don't mean that they don't teach the same work. I mean that they teach the same work, but in different orders. Maybe they start with this topic one, two, three. Maybe your school starts with topic two, three, one. I hope that makes sense. So when it comes to ATPs for 2025, this is what the following statement says. 2023, 2024 ATPs and revised weightings and requirements will continue to be implemented in 2025 until further notice. What this means is that we will be using the same ATPs as last year. So if your teacher is using an ATP or they put it on the board or they print it for you or you're, you're Googling accounting ATP or business or mass ATP or whatever it is and you can't find a 2025 one, that's okay. We are using the exact same one from 2023, 2024 until we are told otherwise and you'll be the first ones to hear it from me when I hear it. So I'm going on about ATPs, but what, what are they? This behind me is, for example, the grade 12 term one physical sciences ATPs. Now, they have one for every grade and for every subject. So if you're in grade eight, you can find the grade eight maths ATP or natural sciences. If you're in grade nine, 10, 11, 12, you can find these ATPs for all your subjects. This one just happens to be for grade 12 physical sciences. And this is what it looks like. You can see that we've got the topic over here. So there's a topic. There's a topic, there's a topic, and then it tells you subtopics, and it says more or less, it should take you one week to do all of this. Then in week two of term one, you should do all of this, and so on. So this is a guide for teachers, but I find it to be an excellent tool for students as well. The reason why I find it useful for students is, obviously you can see where your teacher is, you know, when they're teaching. So you know, okay, they're teaching you momentum and impulse. You go home and you want to prepare for the next topic. You know, okay, cool. After momentum and impulse comes vertical projectile motion. And here's all the subtopics. So you can go to your textbook and read ahead. You can watch YouTube videos from a YouTuber that you trust and, you know, study ahead. You can prepare, you can plan. Another thing that is excellent with using this as a student is I always tell my students, and this is how I create my free documents that you can access on my website, use this as a checklist. 
So what I mean by that is when you are studying momentum, momentum and impulse, you can see that these first two columns, this one here and this one here is for momentum and impulse. And it's got all the little bullet points. When you are studying, use it as a checklist to see, hmm, can I define and calculate momentum of a moving object using P equals MV? You might not do physics, so you might not know what the heck I'm talking about, but you ask yourself, can I do this? Have I studied it? Yes, you tick it and you move on to the next thing. So it's an excellent resource in that way as well. It also allows you to make sure that you're not missing any topics when you're studying and you're working. So where can you find ATPs? I get this question all the time from students and it's really, really simple. You just Google your subject followed by ATPs 2024 or you can try 2023 or you can try 2025 to find the ATP. So for example, to find the one that I showed you, I Googled physical sciences, ATPs 2024, and this website here. So the one, the website by the Department of Basic Education is your best bet. They are the creators of the ATPs. So it says here, 2023, 2024 ATPs for FET phase. Now FET is grade 10, 11, and 12. So if you see FET, you know you're grade 10, 11, or 12. Then you've got the senior phase, which is grade seven, eight, nine. You also get the intermediate phase, which is grade four, five, six, and then the foundation phase, one, two, and three. So you can find ATPs for all the different phases, for all the different subjects. You can see over here, grade 11, physical sciences, you get religion studies, all of them. You can just Google it. But what I've also done for you is I've linked the ATPs in the description box below. So you copy paste this into your browser and you will be able to access the website, the education, Department of Education website. Then we've got this beautiful document called examination guidelines. Now, especially for matrix and also for grade 11s, grade 10s, this also sort of applies to you, but especially matrix. Examination guidelines, they are so important. I I'm doing a whole nother video on examination guidelines. So check out the links below, check out my playlists. But these are different documents. They go in a lot more detail. You can see here is the examination guidelines. This one is for life sciences. This is a snippet, a snapshot of page one. Usually these documents can be like 50 something pages and it explains in detail everything you need to know for your exam. So you can use this, you know, as your guide to make sure that you've studied everything. You get them for grade 12 for all subjects. They are so important in grade 12. I emphasize this all the time to my students. I know when I took life sciences in school, my life sciences teacher said that this document was the most important thing that we could have. We actually had it printed out for all of us. We basically used it to help us study. It was a resource as well as a guide. There's ones for other subjects too, and for other grades. Here's an example of one for mathematics. And here's an example for physical sciences. So for example, in physical sciences, they actually outline all the definitions that you need to know. All of it. This is where you find your definitions correct word for word. And a very important thing for 2025, the 2021 grade 12 examination guidelines and the 2015 grade 10 and 11 examination guidelines for most subjects. So for physical sciences, it is the grade 10 and 11 exam guidelines that were created in 2015. So this is especially for physical sciences, this is true, will remain in use in 2025. So for all subjects, if you are in grade 12, and you see, for example, accounting exam guideline 2021, that is the correct one for 2025 until they update it. So this is what you can type into Google in order to find the exam guidelines for grade 12. This website over here will give you access to all of the exam guidelines for grade 12. It's quite easy to find the grade 12 exam guidelines. Then the 2015 grade 10 and 11 one took me a little bit more digging. And this is, this is for physical sciences. When speaking about other subjects, you're going to have to do a little bit more research. And I would suggest just checking in with your subject teacher if that exam guideline for grade 10 and 11 is applicable. As I said, exam guidelines are more directed towards grade 12s. But 
we have been told as science teachers that for grade 11 and 10, we may use the 2015 exam guidelines. You can find them down, you can download them as PDFs and they are also very, very helpful for physical sciences. And then the last question that I will address in this video is how will you be assessed? So I get asked this all the time, especially towards the end of the year, but I think it's important to know from the beginning, how much do your exams versus your work throughout the year count? So as you know, in term one, term two, term three, you do work, you do projects, you do investigations, you do practicals, you do mid-year control tests, you do June exams. All of those things together count towards what we call your SBA, your school-based assessment, okay? So that's what I mean by work throughout the year. Then you get your final exam, okay? So how much do each of these things count? So I know most people that follow me here on my channel are in grade 12, 10, 11. I also have grade sevens to nines. So as you can see, let's start here with senior phase. As I said, senior phase is grade seven to nine. 60% of your mark is school-based assessments. So this 60% is everything you do throughout the year, not your final exam. So all the other tests and stuff count towards the 60%. And the 40% is your final exams, okay? So a lot of students ask me, ma'am, if I fail throughout the year, can I still pass at the end of the year? And yes, it's a very, very difficult question to answer because... 40%, which is quite a lot of your final mark, comes from your final exam. So if you just, just, just fail in your SBA, but you do really, really, really well in your final exams, there is still a chance that you can pass. That's why your final exam is very, very important. But so is your SBA, the work that you do throughout the year. In grade 10 and 11, you can see that those percentages swap. So what this means is that your final exam becomes more important. 60% of your mark comes from your final exam. 40% comes from throughout the year. This is still quite a high percentage. You need to still focus your utmost best and try your utmost best in all your tests, tasks, projects, pracs throughout the year. And in grade 12, this is a biggie, but 25% comes from your SBA. And this includes your prelim marks and stuff. And 75%, that's huge, three quarters, comes from your final matric exams that you write in October, November. Okay. And this is generally how it will work with regards to assessments. So in grade 12, you always have a proper June mid-year exam. In grade 10 and 11, you also have June exams. And from four to nine, some schools, you call it exams, but it's more like control tests. They're still very important. It's basically exams midway through the year, okay? From grade four to grade 12. At the end of the year, grade 12s, full-scale national senior certificate exams, the big one. Grade seven to 11, proper, proper full-scale exams. And then grade four to six, you do still do exams, but it's on less of a big, big, big hectic scale, okay? I hope that this video helps you. Please let me know what other types of videos you'd like to see like this. Let me know in the comments down below. I want to help you all more than just with physical co sciences content and mass content. I want to be there to help you with tips and tricks like in this video or study motivation or study methods. Let me know in the comments below. Can't wait to see you in another one very soon. Bye everyone.